Now this is going to be a really special video. On March 22nd of 2019, I made this post. It says, inverted yields. Listen, I may mess around on Facebook a lot, but it's time to get serious. We have just inverted on the treasury yield for the first time since 2006. You all remember what shortly happened after 2006. There are two types of people right now. Be scared and worried or stack up cash and get ready for one of the largest wealth transfers in history. Now understand that this information was me telling people that we were headed towards a market correction, a crash, a recession, what have you. And in today's video, I'm really excited to show you guys exactly how you can tell when the next crash is about to happen. Guys, what is going on? It's Patrick. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, obviously hit the subscribe button. I'm going to teach you guys stuff about how to make money, how to predict the markets and how to do things for yourself at home so you can manage your finances better. Also, we have one ticket of admission and that ticket of admission is clicking that like button. So if you haven't already like dismantle that like button, like punch the like button really good and let me know that you want to see more videos like this. So click it, click it, click it before we get going. So I'm going to go on the computer here and this post was made not as a way to scare people, but get ready, get people ready for what was about to happen. And one of the most unique things about this is that this was a basically a 12 month warning shot that we needed to get cash reserves ready for what was to come in the market. And today I'm going to teach you about the treasury yields and what they are and how you can use them. So link in the description here, I will let you know the uh, to go to here. So go to the link in the description if you want to follow along here and select the period of 2019 and hit go. And when you do that, you're going to see this exact screen. Now, in January of 2019, I want you to notice what we are dealing with in terms of yield rates. I don't, you don't really care about the number, but what you care about is, is the general yield curve going up, sideways, or down? And I'm gonna explain all this to you as much as I can, but when we look at this, I just want you to look, we start, at 2.4, okay, two years in is 2.5, okay, 10 years in is 2.67, 30 years in is 2.98. Okay, as you can see, 2.4, 2.42, 2.51, 2.57, .2 it drops at the two year, drops at the three year, 2.49, 2.56, so on and so forth. In general, it is heading up, okay? We could go back again to say 2017, I could hit go. You'll notice the numbers are always gonna be different. Now on a economy that needs more expanding, the lower these numbers will be. So economy that needs more expanding, an economy that the Fed is trying to expand, the numbers will be low. An economy that the Fed is worried about crashing and worried that it needs to slow down or it might topple over, the numbers will be high. Notice how this is 0.52 and notice how in 2019 this is 2.4 or 2.42, etc. You don't really need to know every little detail and all the decibels don't really matter. But going back to 2017 now, I want you to notice how 2017 looks. 0 0.52, 0 0.53, 0 0.65, 0 0.89, 1.22, 1 1.5, so on and so forth. Why is this important? Well, it's important because when we look at this, we need to understand that this is a normal yield curve. It is slowly going up. As you can imagine, if you were to make an investment versus a uh, short-term investment versus a long-term investment, Okay, what would you expect to get a higher return? Something that you had your money at risk long-term or something that you had your money at risk short-term? You would expect to get a higher return putting your money long-term, okay? That is why, for instance, banks have interest rates that are higher for 30-year mortgages over 15. Their money is at risk longer term. And so when we bring this up now, I'm gonna go back to 2019 and I wanna go to the date of this post. Okay, March 22nd, 2019, I sent a warning shot to everybody to get ready for the market to crash. So I'm gonna come down here to March 22nd, 322, and I want you to make sure this is 2019. Okay, I want you to take a good look at it right now and tell me what you see. 2.49, 2.48, 2.46, 2.45, 2.31, 2.24, 2.24, 4, and then it starts to climb again. What happens? We start at 2.49 and get all the way down to 2.24, five years in. Why is that information crucial to us? Well, this is what we call an inverted yield curve. An inverted yield curve is something where when you have a short-term treasury, 
versus a long-term treasury, the long-term treasuries are actually lower than the short-term ones. Now, this might not seem like information that is that important to you, but let me show you the most ridiculous piece of information you've probably ever seen. In the history of time, right here, we have one, two, these gray areas are recessions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Of the last seven recessions since 1970, the yield curve inverted shortly before that. And what happened of March of 2019? The yield curve inverted. And within a year, we had the correction, AKA the recession due to the virus. So take a look at this. You can see this dark black line shows zero. The yield curve is inverted once we hit zero. This is a, a picture that was taken by the way about a year ago. So this is up to date as of December 31st, 2018. So when we look at this, inverted, okay, comes back for a bit, recession. Inverted, comes back for a bit, recession. Inverted, comes back for a while, small recession. Inverted, comes back, recession. Inverted, comes back, recession. Okay, inverted, recession. This is when 9-11 happened. Inverted, the Great Recession happened. And then what happened again in 2019, another inversion. Since this period of time, since 1970, we have successfully inverted seven times. We have now had successful recessions times seven, seven successful recessions. Take a look at this. This is the date of inversion prior to recession. So it took 19 months for the recession to happen in the 1968 inversion. It took seven months in the 73 inversion. It took 16 months in the 78 inversion. It took 80, or it took nine months in the 1980 inversion. It took 18 months in the 1988 inversion. It took 12 months in the 2000 inversion. And it took 17 months in the 2006 inversion before the Great Recession. For an average of 14 months. Now, if we look at this, this was sent out March 12th. It started to invert a little bit before that, by the way. Um, but Or March 22nd, I should say. Sorry about that. So when we look at this, you can see that it started to invert just a couple days before that. But March 22nd is when the heavy dip hit that 2.24, then it was 2.19, then 2.18, 2.16, 2.18, those sort of things. It really started to invert. That's that one month versus that five year yield. So how does this information become crucial? Well, now what you can do is you can go to the current month and you can get ahead of the game and understand, look how small these rates are right now. Look how low, why are rates so low? Why are mortgages so low? Why are interest rates so low? They want to induce spending. The economy is in trouble. It needs a boost. What better way than to lower rates? Notice right now, 0 0.08, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.16, 0 0.19. Notice how it's climbing. That is a normal yield curve. That is telling us that times right now are worse than times will be in three years, and times will be in 10 years, and times will be in 30 years. But if we go back to that original inversion, it was telling us that times right now, in the case of 2019 of March, all it's doing with these numbers is telling us, say for instance, let's backtrack, we're at March 22nd again. Times right now are better than times will be in the future. And when you ever see times right now better than they are in the future, you wanna stack that cash, you wanna sit on cash, you wanna get ready because a correction is happening now. I'm not saying this is guaranteed to happen, but look at the history. Last seven times this happened, we had a recession following within maximum 18 months, on average 14 months. This is crucial information that you guys can take away and start to use today to have a better financial future and set yourself up so when you're in a situation, when you see the next inversion happen, you know for a fact that something's coming and you can get ready and you can get prepared. So with that said, guys, if you got any value, come on, this is the most valuable video I've probably ever given. Again, punch the like button, punch the like button, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment down below what you got out of this, and I will see you guys on the next video.